This time on the show, open source airfoil designs, installing Ubuntu from within Windows, and DC power supplies. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And it's your weekly dose of Technolust. And it's awesome and delicious. Sparkly. What? Oh. I don't know. Oh, my, my TV is sparkly. Yeah, yeah your Revision 3. Yes. Anyway, we have a great show today. I'm going to be dual booting Ubuntu via Windows. Ubuntu? Ubuntu. I thought you were going with pig, pigny, pig, pigums. Penguins? Penguins. Pingai. Pingai. Uh, yeah. Pink eye. Mm, yeah. No, actually, yeah. I shouldn't make fun. We got an email from the yeah. developer that offered to like, you know, help you out like personally, which is really cool. But, oh, really? Uh, but yeah, That's I awesome. think it's. But then again, you're gonna go the long way and what? Go go gnome. I might do gnome. Mm, I don't do think it all I'm. Yourself? I don't think I'm cool enough for customize it. KDE. What? You're not cool enough. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. In two bucks, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, and, and um, Pranay is back from the uh, Quad Shot project to talk nice. about uh, some like airfoil stuff. Ooh, really that's geeky. Be delicious. Yeah, we got a, a big stack of really good questions uh, for the end. Uh, oh, we guess haven't what? seen. Huh? Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, no. Oh. I was just going to say we haven't seen the results yet, but we're still. You know, hoping that everybody voted for us. Yes, we hope everybody voted for us. So we I don't have to wear a cheese too. head. Yeah, I don't really want to wear a cheese hat either, but I can't wait to see the Virginia's for Lover shirt on Ben Hack. That's going to be funny. A lot of people, you know, wrote in us, they're like, oh, it's going to leak. And it's like, no, it's a closed system. And the other thing was that I guess we didn't really properly show this off. But uh, the motherboard itself, this is pretty cool. Hang on, I'm oh, unscrewing a VGA. It actually does have a video card. Nice. Um, the motherboard oh, itself is actually in... A Choco Cat 3 ring binder, which has been modified so that all the ports and stuff fit. <laughs> and this, just so that everybody, so that we're clear on this, that's a full ATX. Just want to make, just throwing that out there. Anyway. Had to be full ATX? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yay! You know what? Case I, mods. I went to Napa Valley this weekend. Yeah, what'd you do there? I hosted a bachelorette party. Mm. I just Napa Valley, had some wines. Well, everybody else has wines. Had the wines, but um, I was the. You had the wines. No, I was the DD. You were the. I mean, I, I was wait, still you able were, to. You were mirroring drives. Yes, I was the designated driver for my girlfriends uh -huh. for the bachelorette, and um, I still got to taste some wines, but I had to use the little spit can that they offer you at the wineries. So. Snub spitting. Yeah, I didn't. They teach get you to that actually. in Missouri. <laughs> you can be the DD for this podcast, huh? Huh? <laughs> it's cream soda. It, it is. Wait, I think it is. Hold on, let me check. It is. Woo! Hey! No, I'm just kidding. You know what I like? It's good. I like when people send us cool stuff at 548 Mark Street, number 39371. You're lucky because we got some really cool stuff this week. All right, let's um, do it. What do we got? Okay, yeah, close your close your computer because we kind of, kind of have a big box. Oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> I told you it's a big box. Ooh. Some floppies. Floppies, who doesn't love Windows 3.1? Dude, five and a quarters. Yeah. <laughs> I had all of my basic files on these. Oh, man, some I really wish floppies. I had this still. This is for a Gateway 2000. We have huh? some, uh, here's the user manuals for all the cool stuff. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. this is Microsoft Windows 3.0. MS-DOS. MS-DOS 622 upgrade. OK, so this man, is my favorite we're living part. large now. Um, Before I show you this, I'm going to read who it's from. It's from uh -huh. Nick. Hey, he says, thanks, Nick. Hey, Hack 5 crew. I've been a fan of the show since the very beginning, and thank you for the hours and hours of entertainment and education you've given throughout the years. I was recently going through some things that I had in storage, that I found, and I found some of my computer parts and software collections that I no longer have use for and thought that you guys would make better use of them than I. Keep up the great work. Hope you have some use for this package. We'll put it on the set. Yes, we will. Yes, and your I junk is now our junk. Thank you all. Remember the photo frame case mod? Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's a lot of RAM. Yeah. It's not only RAM, too. There's RAM. It's like we got some PC100. There's some CPUs. Oh, wow. 
Check it out. It's an AMD. Check it's it out. A, There's even more. It's an old school Athlon XP2100. I'm assuming these I are broken, so I'm not going to take care I of them. I had the XP2100. Look at all these. Dude! Whoa! Oh. Look at all of those CPUs. Okay, well, we have to make some kind of art AMD K62. Yeah, actually, we've got a plenty of CPUs now. We're going to have to make a CPU mobile or we something. We should. We should make some. Ooh, Ooh, what's we a could do like a 3D one. mobile. Are yeah. these like laptop ones? I, I, don't, I don't really know which one this is. Yeah, I don't I'm going to have to look up that model. It says it's Motorola, so. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Sweet. Dude. Sweet. Thank yeah, you. That's this is pretty. Fun. Oh, it, it's got a latch. How fantastic is that? Yeah, we could use it. Yeah, sweet. Okay, cool. Thank well, you so much, Nick. That's fantastic. You know what? Let's get the ball rolling. Just let's get the ball rolling. Let's get flying. Let's zoom out of here. Let's throw over to Pernay and find out about flying and stuff. And then when we get back, Dale Chase will be here. Yeah. This week we have the pleasure of having Pernay. What's up, man? From the Quad Shot project, we've got the Quad Shot in the studio again. I'm super stoked because you're gonna you're gonna show me how to build a uh, an airframe and everything that there is to know about avionics in the next five minutes, right? Well, I'm gonna show you a little bit of what we did for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to know. So this is what's actually this material? Well, this is actually extruded polypropylene. It's uh, sorry, expanded polypropylene EPP. It's basically foam. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've been doing to build our uh, prototypes is taking a block of foam and using a CNC router to uh, cut out the shape which we designed. And uh, hopefully, if things go well on Kickstarter, and they've been going so tremendously well, thanks to all good, the support good. we've got, and uh, we should be able to uh, injection mold them, which will give it a nice clean finish. Oh, nice. Yeah. So uh, I guess when it comes to the shape of the aircraft, that's kind of one of the most important parts. How do you come up with that? Well, there are several parts to the shape of an aircraft. This is basically a flying wing. And so the wing itself is made up of these 2D sections called airfoils. So you know the whole wing shape where uh, it's you know, taken the front and it has this teardrop shape. Right, and right. I mean, every, every, every kid has taken a piece of paper and <laughs> blown across the top. Essentially, to yeah. Fly. So it's a slightly more complicated version of that. And so basically what we have are two or three sections within this wing, and they're all essentially joined together by a loft. Now, the loft essentially is decided by what kind of sweep we want, and that is partly decided by the drag that's on the aircraft, and partly decided by the stability we want, mm -hmm. because we want it to be swept enough that the center of gravity falls in a specific location on the aircraft, and that helps it maintain stability in flight. And, and how many airframes did it take you, uh, or iterations of those, did it take you to get to the, the perfect one? Uh, this is the eighth wing, and I think we've pretty much frozen the aerodynamic design at this point. Uh, basically, what we started off doing was designing the airfoils themselves, the 2D sections. Mm -hmm. And we use a couple of programs called XFOIL and AVL, which were written by uh, Professor Mark Trela at uh, MIT. And what I have over here is just a front-end version that another gentleman uh, wrote up, and it actually and shows this is, off. this is uh, open source stuff? This, this is open source. Oh, that's yeah, so great. XFLR5, it's excellent uh, front-end software for XFOIL and AVL, and you can just download it off uh, SourceForge. And uh, you know you can see, for example, after we run our analysis on different airfoils, you can see uh, the boundary layers separating and you know becoming thicker. As okay, the so the the increasing. blue part here is the actual wing. The yellow is, is representing what? The yellow is actually representing the boundary layer, which is essentially the slow moving portion of air and is slow moving on top of the wing right next to the surface because of the friction. And up here, is that the friction? Uh, up here is the pressure that you can uh, see on the top surface and the bottom surface. And we surface. can actually see here, as it t turned here, the pressure got pretty dramatic. Absolutely. Wh what is that really representing? Well, the, peak, the main thing that we look for is the difference in the pressure between the top surface and the bottom surface. And it's that pressure differential that really uh, you know, manifests itself as the upward force that you see of the lift. And uh, so basically, when it's at the maximum lift position, you'll see that the top surface and the bottom surface have a very different pressure mm -hmm. because there's lots of pressure pushing it up, or you know, there's low pressure on top, and there's very low pressure on top, and much higher pressure on the bottom surface. Uh, you know, speaking on a fairly basic level. Uh, and what happens after you get beyond a certain point is that the pressure that you see, uh, well, basically because there's this really huge negative pressure peak or there's this huge low pressure area in front mm -hmm. of the airfoil and there's a high pressure area at the back of the airfoil, the airflow actually wants to move backwards. And at that point, the wing stalls as yeah. soon as the flow no starts moving. And that's no good. So our, uh, you know, v v as you can see, it's a VTOL aircraft and it goes through some really high angles of attack. 
So our, I, you know, our real design criterion for the airfoils was to make sure that that stall region was pushed as far out in terms of alpha as possible. Alpha is the angle of attack. And so you can see over here, we've managed to actually, and the dark blue is the is a standard NACA 20. What's uh, a for NACA? NACA airport? is the National, National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, which was the precursor to NASA. Okay. Which we so know. this is kind of like a baseline airfoil? This is a baseline symmetric airfoil. We chose symmetric airfoils because we wanted oh, well, this aircraft to fly. We don't have a fuselage fly. or anything. We so don't have yeah. a fuselage, yeah. And we wanted this aircraft to fly the same way that they fly upside down or right side up. Is there a right side up? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's up to <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so this is a standard NACA, the dark blue, and you can see that it really stalls fairly sharply, you know, right about uh, just over 12 degrees over here. And this is our airfoil in the light blue, and you can see that it stays above a CL of 1, which is pretty good, all the way from 5 degrees of alpha all the way to 20 degrees of alpha. And it's only so at, at it about 20 degrees, then it stalls? Yeah. Which is fine because by that time your thrust is, uh, you know, your main lifting force is coming from the props anyway. Or so are there like, are, uh, the do you come up with a shape and then run it through a simulator, or how do you, how do you come up with these figures? Uh, so basically, this uh, the airfoil definition is written out in terms of x and y coordinates, and uh, you know there are many ways of doing it. Different people do it different ways. A good way of doing it is to start with a standard airfoil like a NACA in case mm -hmm. you want a symmetric airfoil. Yeah. And then look at that pressure profile that I was showing you earlier. And basically, m change the shape of the airfoil to make sure that pressure profile does what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know there are optimizers in XFOIL that will allow you to do that. And there are some things you can tune by hand. Nice. Now, what about the, c can you tell me how, um, about the different modes of operation of, uh, of the quad shot here? Because I know that with the autopilot, um, it, it does a lot of different things. Um, what are those different modes? So basically, we have three modes. Uh, the first one is an assisted hover mode. Now, what happens in assisted hover is that your sticks, which are right here, essentially, when they're at the center, what you command is the angle of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. And the IMU on board, which is the inertial measurement unit, tells you or it knows what it calculates what the uh, angle of the aircraft is. And basically, so when I push it all the way forward, it wants the aircraft to be at 90 degrees, which is fully flat forward. So it's flying. Right, and then it's not a like it's not like a helicopter anymore. It's, it's an airplane it's, it's now. It's an airplane right. now, right? But if I let it go, then it centers itself. So it re resets back to it resets back to vertical. Mm -hmm. And so that's really easy if you're a novice flyer because you know if you start panicking, let the uh, sticks go and it'll write itself. All right, so that's the first mode is mm -hmm. it will just stay vertical. What's the other one? Absolutely, the second mode is a forward flying mode. So essentially what happens in the forward flying mode is that you hit a switch and this wing will, you know, the aircraft will spool up the top motors, spool mm -hmm. down the bottom motors and mix in some elevons and flip it forward and it'll do this for you. All you have to do is hit a switch. Okay, so then you can tell it to, you know, take a dive, right? let go of the sticks and it'll, and it'll go back to forward flight. It'll go back to forward flight. Now, the thing to remember when you do go into a dive is that you're controlling the angle of the aircraft again. So mm -hmm. you're not controlling the altitude directly. So, you know, if you do go into a sharp dive, make sure it's okay. you know, sure. far enough above the ground. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, anything. Uh, so, yeah, again, that's a fairly highly assisted mode. Uh -huh. In fact, the good thing about that is that uh, you know how when you try and turn an aircraft, you have to bank it, and then you have to feed in a little bit of rudder so that that and this doesn't have that. It doesn't have a tail. So how do you how do you compensate for that? Well, we have a little IMU on the thing, like I said, and it measures uh, sideways acceleration. So what you want to do is to make sure that your sideways acceleration is zero when you're actually turning. That's called a coordinated turn. Mm -hmm. And so basically what it does is, it, if it sees that the aircraft is slipping one way or the other, it'll automatically spool up propellers on the left or right side, depending on what you're trying to do, and make sure that your turn is coordinated. So, so all it's you have to do smooth. is it's totally smooth, it's totally coordinated, so all you have to do is hit a stick, you know, just a single stick, and it'll turn, do the turn for you. So it's a single stick. Now, turn. as you did that, also, we were seeing right here on the plotter uh, variations here in the, the data that you're getting back. What is this data that you're getting back? So the data that I'm getting back is, uh, over here, is the estimate of the aircraft. So basically, this is what the angle of the Oh, wow. Is. That is so cool. So that is just coming straight in from the IMU. Yeah, it really and is like a, like a Wiimote. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it, yeah, in many ways it is. And so, you know, it knows what its heading is. It knows what its pitch in your are. Okay, so what is the top one? The top one is what you set from the remote control. We call it the reference. Mm -hmm. So that's what you control. So suppose I turn on this remote control, right? And I'm going to have to spin up the props for this one. So I'll quickly ask uh, 
my colleague Chris to step in. And Chris, could you just hold that? And I'm going to have you put these on just safety first. All right. So if I spin up the propellers, and this is a safety mode, uh, we, the system doesn't turn on unless the props are spinning. It gives a good indication that things are on. But now if you look at the reference over here, what happens is that when I pull on it, it moves. OK, so, so your I top one this. is what you're telling it to do. Absolutely. But it knows what it is because it it's got the it IMU. Is, right. And in fact, if you look at the bottom graphs over here, yeah. right, these are the commands that the autopilot is feeding into the motors at this point. So when I pull so it what, up. So what the, what's the green and the red representing? Okay, so the green is the yaw command, mm -hmm. the red is the roll command, and the blue is the pitch command. Okay, so, so it's hold it to pitch a lot right there. Right, because I just pull this thing down. So if I pull the stick down, which means I'm telling you to pitch up, uh -huh. what happens is that you can it, see the command. I see it sending the command, and, and if you were to tell it to roll, you would see it in the 3D. Absolutely. So suppose I set it to the attitude mode for the telemetry, and I tell it to roll. There you go. Nice. And you can... Yeah. You can totally hear that. It's like yeah. adjusting which, uh, right. which propeller is getting the power. So if I want to yaw, and you can see it moves around. And, and it's just getting upset around. because it's not actually doing yeah, what it Yeah, because Chris be is doing. holding it steady at the yeah. moment. So yeah. I'm telling it to do all these things, but it can't do it. Yeah. So it won't do it. In fact, if Chris, could you just move it around a little bit? Oh, wow. OK, so I can see he's now moving the aircraft, the bottom view, and right. it's trying to and fight And it's trying you. to fight it, yeah. Because mm -hmm. it wants to It wants to stay, stay at that because I'm not putting in any commands. Nice. Because like I said, <laughs> Easy mode, leave all the sticks so, be, okay. and it's all good. That defines the first two mode, and then, of mm -hmm. course, the third mode is the fun mode. The third mode is the fun mode. The third mode, again, is a simple switch away. All mm -hmm. you have to do is, you know, so from this is two, and that's three. And what happens in mode three is that it's really like an aerobatic aircraft at that point. You have very direct control of things. There's always the autopilot running, but what you can do is tell it to point any which way you want. Mm -hmm. You can tell the set point to rotate at about 720 degrees per second or more. Uh, our gyros max out at 1,000, uh, 1,200 degrees a second. Uh, so we so try and some, limit it so below that. So you can do yeah. some crazy acrobatics with it. Yeah, I, we've pulled uh, maneuvers that have had the aircraft spinning around at between 800 and 1,000 <laughs> degrees a and second. Since it's, just, crazy, since it's yeah. just a flying wing, it could probably spin on oh, a dime, yeah, too. Oh, yeah, you bet, yeah. It nice. can spin on a dime. It can turn around on a wingtip. So See, I'm going to be yeah. the guy, as soon as I get mine, I'm on the Kickstarter. I can't wait. Uh, I'm not only am we going to be packet sniffing from the sky with a Wi-Fi pineapple, but I'm going to be doing acrobatics while I'm at it. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much. It has been Absolutely. a pleasure thank once you. again. People can go over to flyquadshot.com. Flyquadshot.com. Awesome. And all of this software that you spoke about is open source. They can just download All of this is open playing. source. This is all uh, in a project called Paparazzi, and the link to the wiki is on our website. I love and it. And yeah, they can find everything there. Thank you guys so much. We'll thank be back you. in just a bit. Now, it needs to be something more like straightforward, like usbrubberducky.com. No, no, it should be more hardcore, like like tacticalassaultducks.com. I'm leaning towards programmablehumaninterfacedevice.com. No, no way. absolutely not. Is that you typing? Kirby? Kirby. Meow. No matter what your project is, domain.com has what you need to register, host, and promote your next big idea even if it's fgugaha.com. Domain.com is owning the competition with cheap domain names and hassle-free service. Their easy checkout process and domain discovery system make it easy to select the domain that's right for you and set up your website without hassle. Domain.com will even transfer your domain name from another registrar and hook you up with an extra year for free for a mere, well, it's actually less than $6.50 when you use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout. That's right. Our coupon code HACK5 will save you 15%. Don't forget, when you think domain names, think domain.com. McAfee Deep Safe and Better Protection. For processors Intel put on the demonstration at the Dev Forum this week. Defend your OS against rootkit technique. Microsoft shows off Windows 8, the Phone 7 esque. Metro looks great. A new UI with tiles and apps to flick through. And mess the end of Microsoft to get the preview. THC Hydra updates the 7. The fast network login cracker helps you get in. Loop through users as RDP. Test trusted domains via SMB. Attackers tampered with the BitTorrent and uTorrent. You didn't download what you thought you'd get. Fresh client installs infected with malware. You paid security shield to fix threats that weren't there. Hack on. Piece of daring fireball. Hack on. Enter the hacker news. Hack on. Enter 
threat level hack on insecurity complex hack on uh hack five hack on yeah one time for your mind i'm del chase those are your hacker headlines <laughs>